Well, AI video and filmmaking have taken another big step up. Runway ML have dropped Gen 3. It's definitely not gone without notice how suspiciously quiet Runway has been over the last few months. In fact, I can't even really remember what their last big update or feature was. And obviously we have seen some pretty big releases over the last few weeks with Kling and Luma Labs Dream Factory. I do have a Dream Factory update coming up for you in just a little bit. But through that all, Runway did seem like they were sleeping, except now we know they weren't sleeping, they were lurking. Okay, let's dive in and check it out. So first off, yes, Gen 3 looks amazing. I do want to point out, though, that it has actually not been released as of this video. That said, I do not expect this to be a Sora situation in which, you know, we see a bunch of incredible examples and then months later, you know, there's, there's not even a whisper of a release date. In fact, Runway announced that Gen 3 will be coming, quote, in the coming days. And there is a lot to look forward to. According to Runway CEO Cristobal Valenzuela, Gen 3 Alpha was designed from the ground up for creative applications, which enable it to understand and generate a wide range of styles and artistic instructions. They're also calling this obviously a major improvement in fidelity, consistency, and motion over Gen 2, and I can definitely attest to that. Uh, and they say is a step towards building a general world model. A world model is basically an AI system that can internally build an environment and then make predictions as to what will happen within that environment. It is the thing that has made Sora so impressive, I mean, hypothetically at least, because we still haven't gotten a chance to actually play with Sora. Runway themselves have a great explainer video on world models. I'll have that link down below. Definitely worth a watch because I think that this is going to be a pretty big part of this next generation of AI video models. Video generations seem to be about 10 seconds long, which make it the longest like straight out of the box without having to you know, do sort of extension tricks like clipping the final frame and then rerunning the generation. Detail and fidelity are pretty remarkable. Take this example of this woman driving to a job that she very clearly hates, uh, while at the same time wondering if she left the iron on. I mean, I would argue if you were just kind of scrolling by on your phone and saw this video, you would not think twice that this was not a real person. I mean, there are a handful of inconsistencies. We do have this like this flag that flies by, uh, attached to nothing, and then just kind of vanishes. There's like a slight bit of morphing around her hair, or maybe she just has the AC cranked really high. And one thing that you could chalk up to inconsistency and morphing is the dirty windshield. Uh, on the one hand, yes, it does you know slightly alter as the clip goes on, but on the other hand, like the fact that it's not going completely nuts is like. Pretty, pretty amazing. Some other shots that really impressed me, uh, this POV shot of a train driving through somewhere in Europe, clearly. Um, you know, really impressed with the instrumentation here. I don't know how to drive a train, so I'm just gonna presume all of that is super correct. It does seem to be very good at POV shots and like these kind of like drone footage shots. The prompt here is, aerial shot of a drone moving through a dense green forest. And going back to the world model idea, this really assists with fine-grained temporal control, uh, as in this example, which is actually kind of one of my favorites of the drone shots. This is a uh, first-person view drone shot through a castle on a cliff. And through this, Gen 3 obviously manages to basically transition between two different locations. We can see that at work in this shot as well, where, you know, obviously we start with this macro shot of two ants and then slowly like kind of crane up to reveal a suburban neighborhood. And that's really impressive. I think that we all know that in, you know, previous models, we would expect to see those ants turn into like giant kaiju ants and start rampaging through the neighborhood, which actually I, I do want to prompt that now. And super exciting for AI filmmaking is the fact that Gen 3 Alpha excels at you know, creating human characters with realistic emotions, actions, and expressions. I mean, this looks pretty remarkable, perhaps not the most you know flattering opening shot for our AI character here, uh, but I think we've all run into that issue running a Gen 2 character shot where as we move or orbit the camera, the facial features of our character you know begin to morph and change out to the point where it, it kind of usually ends up becoming a different character. Here's another shot of jazz legend Benny Kingston, who actually does not exist. I totally made that name up. He is an AI generated character. You should check out Benny's 
album, Blue Keys. It's really good, also does not exist. So a couple of things to note here is the fact that as the camera kind of pulls out, we do see some of the wrinkleness and cragginess of Benny's face kind of smooth out, which is something that I don't think that he would argue with. He lived a very hard fake life. But the thing that I'm super impressed with are the fingers playing piano, which look like fingers playing piano and not like, you know, two spiders jumping up and down on a tub of jello. Another character example with some incoherencies. Uh, here we have a beautiful woman hanging out in an abandoned factory, you know, as you do. Uh, you know, and as the camera pulls back, we do see that lens flare happens, you know, basically in front of her, which is a little bit odd. But the thing to note here is a she remains the character that she is throughout the shot and like the tattoos don't start morphing out like you know they're uh, in red dragon and look just in case it sounds like i might be kind of nitpicking at this model i'm really not uh i'm really genuinely blown away by gen 3 and what the runway team has put together here if anything i actually applaud the fact that they're putting in examples that you know set realistic expectations it is still ai video it's still going to do weird stuff but some of that weirdness can be super cool uh take this creature from you know i don't know polish folklore i, I don't know what it is but i think we can all agree that that is definitely a creature from polish folklore Going back to the world model, apparently they've also been working on physics within it. So here we have, you know, a fire pit going and then rain coming down, putting out that fire. Uh, that is definitely something that you would not have been able to pull off in the previous generation of AI video models. Now, I believe that most of the examples that we've seen so far are from the text to video side of things. Uh, the model is capable of doing image to video, although kind of what I'm parsing together is that we're probably not going to get that right at launch. That will be something that uh, will be added as a feature down the road. That said, what is super exciting is the fact that we'll have access to the you know suite of controls that runway has developed for gen 2 including motion brush you know the advanced camera controls and director mode they also note that there will be even more upcoming tools for fine grain control over structure style and motion and what's really wild is that they're opening up the door for full customization. It will allow for Gen 3 essentially to be trained so that, you know, you can have consistent characters, locations, uh, and they say target specific artistic and narrative requirements. Granted, this does sound like it's more aimed at, you know, studios and media organizations, but, uh, you know, if, I, I mean, I'll apply for it. If I get access to it, I'll definitely let you know how it works out. I do want to show you a sizzle reel that was put together by Nicholas Newbert, who had early access because uh, I think this really showcases exactly the width of what you can accomplish with Gen 3. As a quick note, I did have to swap the audio just because I don't know the source of it. The link to Nicholas's original reel is down below.
let you know the moment that Gen 3 becomes available. And obviously I'm going to do a full walkthrough of it. And hopefully that will not be very long away. In the meantime, Luma apparently is not taking this sitting down and they've released one pretty big update and are teasing another one that will be dropping very soon. The first update, which is available now, allows you to extend your five second clip an additional five seconds. Uh, and then from there, you can actually extend that 10 second clip out another five seconds and continue on with it. And what's kind of cool about it is that you can actually swap out your prompt each time you do this, which allows you to do sort of like these kind of insane drone shots like this. Uh, it's sort of funny, like as I was watching this, this kind of reminds me of the infinite zoom thing taken to a whole new level. I didn't have a lot of time to play around with it as it did just drop this morning and obviously a lot of stuff happened this morning. So taking this Game of Thrones inspired shot, I was watching House of the Dragon last night. So um, what's really impressive to me about it is the fact that you don't really notice a hard transition between that initial five seconds and the extension. Now, there is a bit of a bump that occurs right about here, um, but it, I mean, it's really subtle. Additionally, it does feel to me that the focus stays a lot sharper than when you use the final frame trick, which does have the tendency to go pretty soft. They're also announcing some new tools, including something that kind of looks like it might be a concept generator or like, I don't, wouldn't call it a storyboard generator here, but at least like, establishing looks for an idea. Uh, and then from there, you can actually explore different concepts within that shot as well, and video in painting, uh, and stylization changes as well. So it does look like video in painting is definitely coming to Luma and isn't going to be as finicky, like it's not gonna require rotoing um, because the model knows you know, the character, the background, the objects and whatnot. So you won't have to spend time playing around with like, you know, your roto brush or anything, you can just select character and swap them out. No time frame in terms of when that feature is dropping, but I mean, who knows? At the rate everything's going, it could be five minutes from now. Closing out, you know, I don't know if we're still saying it's just not there yet, but I do want to point out that uh, one of the first things that I ever did in Gen 1, uh, so, you know, obviously this is, you know, some cookbooks, a thermos, and two lunch boxes that I ran through Gen 1 and turned into this, which look, it's charming for what it is. It definitely is not the cyberpunk city at sunset that I was hoping it was going to be, uh, but to point out that that generation took place on March 4th of 2023. That's it for today. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.